Greetings everyone, this is Light of Tabor and I'm your host Mark Rattel. Today we have a very unique episode, I don't know if we've ever done one of these before, maybe once before, and it may have been even before we came to Orthodoxy, so I can't even recall, it's been so long since we've done one of these episodes. This is going to be an unboxing, minus the box, it's going to be an unpackaging video. So we got a package all the way from the Ukraine, let me see if I can cover this up, and uh, show you something here. From the Ukraine there, all the way from the Ukraine, and yeah, it's a cross that I ordered, it's a Russian cross from the 1800s, from the 19th century, and I ordered it online. And I've been waiting for it for a few weeks, and it just arrived last night, and I was, I've been waiting all night, I feel like a kid on Christmas morning, to open it for you guys. I wanted to open it, just along with you guys, and enjoy that experience, and I'm really excited, I'm really excited. I've never had a cross like this all the way from the 1800s, all the way from Russia. I have my baptismal cross, which is a Russian-style cross that says save and preserve on the back, in Slavonic, but... That's a, it, I love this cross, don't get me wrong, but man, this is going to be really cool to, to see. I've never had something like this before. So let's get this thing open. We got the, the knife here. I just don't want to show anything on screen that I'm not supposed to show, like the addresses. Let's see if we can slice this open here without slicing our fingers open. That's the, the plan. But yeah, no, I had a really good time yesterday. I was watching um, a stream on Kotel. Kotel, basically Church of the Eternal Logos. And they were doing an um, open panel call-in stream on is, is space travel possible? Is it all just science fiction? What do you think? You know, and obviously it drifted into a lot of debate about flat earth and things in that nature, debate about the firmament, the nature about that. I, got, I ended up getting a ton of information. Yesterday, I couldn't really, I couldn't cam up because I was preparing for my son's birthday. We were celebrating my son's birthday a little bit late. But, um, yeah, we went out with the fam, went to a little pizza spot, played some arcade games. It was really cool, really awesome. Had a great time with the fam. But, um, basically, there was people coming on the stream. I think, I don't, I know David was just bringing people on to just discuss openly. People are just searching for the truth. I don't think he has a hard stance on the topic. And he was just bringing people on to discuss. Some of the people that were coming on were spreading a lot of misinformation, though. So we're going to have to do a stream touching on some of the, the quotes. I found a bunch of quotes from the I mean, I already had a lot of this, but I just kind of went back and just got it because I guess, you know, I'm just, people need to see this stuff, especially if they're Orthodox. I think they should know what the writings of the Church Fathers say. I think the writings of the Church Fathers are important. I think they're more important than whatever NASA's putting out. I think the Scripture... I trust NASA... And the church fathers, no, I trust the Lord have mercy. I don't trust NASA. I trust the scriptures and the church fathers more than I trust NASA. I don't trust NASA at all, actually. So, I mean, they've been proven to be perpetual liars. We never went to the moon. I mean, if you think we went to the moon, you just, I don't know what to tell you at this point. But we never went to the moon. They lied to us about that. They've been lying to us about going to Mars, putting rovers on Mars. They've been lying to us about everything. Why would you believe perpetual liars? Why would you believe a perpetual liar? Why would you put your faith in NASA above the scriptures? Like, I, It's crazy to me, man. It's crazy. We're going to do a breakdown. I got a ton of quotes from the church fathers. I got quotes from the scriptures, the book of Job. We'll get into the book of Enoch another time because that's a whole other thing. But yeah, no, I've got, I've got tons of information to share on the subject at hand in the firmament. And some guy came on saying it's, uh, the original word is rakia, and that means that's a verb. It's actually a noun. The root word is a verb. But the noun actually means a solid expanse. I've got information. I and mean, it's like, it's ridiculous some of the misinformation that was being spread. And they've even got footage of nukes, of like missiles hitting the, uh, the firmament in Operation Fishbowl, which happened in 1962. So we got footage of that. I mean, you can access that. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. But then, <laughs> that's not what this video is about. This video is about this cross right here. This is... So here it is. I'm going to open up this little section right here. Sorry to ramble off there. I'm a little crazy when it comes to that kind of stuff. I'm a little passionate on it when it comes to that subject because I do think a lot of people like to say, you know, why does it matter? Why does the, you know, it's just a, 
you know, why does the truth matter? Why does knowing all the you don't need to know all the truth? That's the thing. I don't think I don't even know what the the shape of the earth is. I think it's a mystery of God. I'm okay leaving it as a mystery of God. I'm totally fine with that because I don't need to know everything. I'm not God, so you know what I mean. This isn't Gnosticism. We don't need to know everything. I'm okay, and that's the beauty of Orthodoxy is they embrace mystery. So I feel like there's a place for this to be embraced at a certain point. We don't. We obviously don't know. It's a heliocentric theory. I don't believe the theory at all. There's a geocentric theory which actually. St. Athanasius proclaims God. We, we'll get into that on the next video, but why does the truth matter? Here's the thing. Christ, if Christ is the truth, the ultimate truth, living in alignment with truth is, is moving closer to God. Living in, in deception is moving away from God. Why would we want to accept any lie when we know that the father of lies is the evil one? Why would you want to accept any lie? You, it, we, we're so out of, out of alignment with nature. Why would you... And, and people... Do you ever wonder why we're so out of alignment with nature? Maybe we, we're a part of creation under the creator, with nature. Wouldn't knowing the, the reality and the truth of nature bring us more in accordance, more in alignment with that, with said creation that we are a part of? I think there's something to that, man. We're going to explore that more in the next video. I don't want to get too sidetracked on that right now, but it's been on my mind and on my heart to speak on that. So here we go, dude. Grand, grand finale. It's a tiny cross. But very cool. And here we go. It's in the baggie here. We're going to take it out. And this is a cross with St. Theodosius of Chernigov on it. And we're going to read a little something about who St. Theodosius, Theodosius of Chernigov was. Here's the cross right here. Let's see if we can focus in on it. It's a very tiny one. I don't know if you'll be able to see it too, too well. I'm trying to get you guys a good shot. But it's a little blurry. That's okay. So we'll do the back side here. The other side had Christ on it. The one I showed you previously. And then the back, which I... So here's Christ on this side. See if you see that. Yeah, it's a little blurry. And then this side has St. Theodosius of Chernigov. On the back. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a cross from Russia from the 1800s. And tracked it down online, did some research, did some uh, hunting around. And uh, you can find stuff like this, you know. But uh, sometimes you got to order it from overseas because... It's not as common over here to find things of that nature. So here we go. We're going to read a little something about St. Theodosius, Archbishop of Chernigov. All right. The future Holy Hierarch was born at the beginning of the 1630s in the province of Podolsk. He was of the lineage of the ancient aristocratic polonitsky uglitsky family. His parents were priests Nikita and Maria. The piety which ruled in the family of the future holy hierarch benefited the child's spiritual development. From childhood, he excelled in humility and devotion to prayer. The youth's natural capacities blossomed in the Kiev Bratz College at the Kiev Theophany Monastery. This was at the close of the 1640s when the college was at its zenith. St. Theodosius's calling to the monastic path was confirmed during his school years. He spent all of his free time in prayer, in contemplation of God, and in reading of the divine scriptures. After his schooling, the future holy hierarch accepted monastic tonsure in the Kiev Caves Lavra. He was given the name Theodosius in honor of Venerable the Theodosius, commemorated May 3rd. In 1662, St. Theodosius was appointed abbot of the Korsan Monastery in the Diocese of Kiev, and in 1664, rector of the ancient Kiev that word right there, Lord have mercy. Vidubitsk Monastery. <laughs> Pardon me, I'm trying to read Russian words here. Shortly before this took place, the monastery had been given in the hands of the Uniates and had been utterly devastated. Thanks to his energy and persistence, St. Theodosius succeeded in quickly reestablishing the Vidubitsk Monastery of St. Michael. He took special care with respect to proper church order. The holy abbot, a strict ascetic, strove to promote the spiritual growth of the residents of the monastery. In 1680, he established a small skeet on the island of 
Mikhail Lav Shino, not far from the monastery, for those brethren who wish to live in isolation. Sorry, this is, makes me kind of crack up me trying to pronounce some of these words. During his ten, tenure as, a, as abbot of Kiev, Vidubitsk Monastery, Holy Hierarch Theodosius endured very difficult times. Methodius, Bishop of Mititslav and Orshansk, accused him and other abbots of betraying the Russian government and of corresponding with traitors. On September 20th, 1668, St. Theodosius was required to explain the matter. On November 17th, 1668, on November 17th, 1668, it was learned that the accusations were slanderous and the Holy Hierarch and the other abbots were pardoned. Let's scroll down here so we can continue reading the rest of this on St. Theodosius of Chernigov. All right, pardon me here. They were pardoned. Where are we at? Okay, the most revered Lazar Baranovic recognized St. Theodosius's great spiritual qualities and established close ties with him, calling him a lamb of Christ's flock, learned in obedience. He expressed the prophetic wish that St. Theodosius's name would be written in the heavens. Sorry, I'm going to scroll down a little bit more so we can get the rest of this. In 1668, St. Theodosius was appointed Archimandrite, Archimandrite of the Chernigov Yeletsk Monastery. His appointment was primarily at the behest of most revered Lazar, most revered Lazar, most reverend Lazar. Saint Theodosius had to expend much expert effort to set the Yeletsk Monastery in order. For the monastery, not yet recovered from its desolation at the hands of the Jesuits and D Dominicans, was quite, quite poor and disorganized. Within two or three years, though, through the assiduous efforts of St. Theodosius, the Yeletsk Monastery had improved to the point that its continued existence was assured. On September 11, 1692, with great pomp, St. Theodosius was consecrated Archbishop in the D Dormition Cathedral in Moscow, Kremlin. The Holy Hierarch focused special attention on awakening and maintaining in his flock a spirit of, the tr of true Christian piety. With this in mind, he endeavored to maintain the old monasteries and churches, and to see that new ones were established. During St. Theodosius' tenure in the Chernigov Diocese, there was a notable upsurge in and strengthening of monasticism. The Holy Hierarch also paid great attention to the clergy and showed sharp discernment in the selection of candidates for the priesthood. He lent particular support to Chernigov's religious schools, inviting them learned monks from Kiev including St. John Maximovich, future Metropolitan of Tobolsk, who became the Holy Hierarch's assistant, successor, and organizer of religious schools in Chernigov. Among St. Theodosius's remarkable qualities were his rigorous fairness in dealing with clergy and flock, his profound sympathy, his tolerance, and his Christian peaceable disposition. I don't like that word, tolerance. Not only Orthodox people, but also people of other faiths turned to him for help and counsel. St. Theodosius did not nourish the Chernigov flock for very long, though, sensing his coming death. He summoned to Chernigov St. John Maximovich, administrator of the Bryansk Sviena Monastery, and elevated him from higher monk to Archimandrite of the Chernigov Yeletsk Monastery. In the person of the new Archimandrite, he was grooming his successor. On February 6, 1696, Holy Hierarch Theodosius reposed. He was interred in a specially built crypt behind the right kleros of the Chernigov Cathedral of S.S. Boris and Gleb. St. Theodosius's ascetic way of life and the secret help which he has extended to all those who raise up prayers to him bear witness to the grace-filled gifts he acquired. The glorification of Holy Hierarch Theodosius took place on September 9, 1896. So that's a little bit of the history of St. Theodosius of Chernigov. Here's the, the little cross we got. Very tiny, but very cool. And from the 1800s and just like a, almost like a little relic here. It's just really cool piece of history from Russia that I'm very blessed and grateful to have. I'm trying to give you guys a last little shot just to see if we can get a better, better look at this tiny little bugger here. Turn it around again with.
But yeah, we'll be doing that other video on the firmament and basically like geocentrism. I'm not geocentric. I just lean more towards that than heliocentrism. I'm okay with a lot of this being a mystery of God, but I'm not okay with accepting lies and just being like, why does the truth matter? You know, I think that's ridiculous. But anyways, we're going to do that video and we'll, we might even be doing it today because I'm a little hyped up on the subject and it's just like, uh, it's, it's just, you know, it's building up inside of me when I hear people speaking deception like in my face in a very passive aggressive like uh just deceptive manner it kind of irks me you know especially in rep in reference to god's creation and i just know i know this stuff's important and it is important and it's like why why is it important to not accept lies i mean who's the father of lies you know what does that lead to leading in, in any little deception any little divergence from the truth you know people would be like why did the same people that say that i feel like are the same people that are like why does the filioque matter it's just you know it just well, it, it perverts the, the original doctrine of the Holy Trinity, for one. You know, it, it takes the, the, the Father out of the source. It's like, it, it's, it doesn't work. Any divergence from the truth, man, it, it's like we need to be really firm on this stuff. You know, Christ is the truth, and that means something. That's telling you something. The truth matters. It really does. And the, and, and the evil one being the father of lies, that matters too. That's telling you something. So, we'll talk more about this in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Glory to God, God bless, Lord have mercy on me, a sinner. Till next time, y'all.